Do you want a booster seat? <laughs> no, but can you can you, can you hear me a seatbelt, please? Experiment P6-01, codename Behemoth, has arrived on the planet's surface. Perfect. We will prepare test subjects P6-02 for when they return. Permission to speak freely? Permission granted. Lord Megatron has not approved of a second test subject. It's illogical to waste time with getting approval, Soundwave. I am merely fast-tracking my results. If it will ease your circuits, you may ask Megatron, but I will be proceeding in my research regardless. Megatron must approve of this. Very well. Alright, so you guys are still in the field, and before you is a massive mechanical creature that's standing on all fours with its huge horns, a cannon on its shoulder blades, towering you both by 80 feet. You notice all four optics are fixated on you both. You're not sure if they are intelligent enough to speak, but I don't know if you guys want to stick around and find out. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a no for me. <laughs> Before you guys can react, though, the beast, its cannon begins wiring up and charging. It turns away from you guys and towards the ship that crashed and stares at some of the survivors and charges. Uh oh. Uh, uh, time to go. <laughs> charges the ship and one of the victims, we'll call them, unconveniently standing too close and this beast with the easiest flick of their wrist and they go flying a thousand feet in the air. <laughs> Get out of here, Zephyr. <laughs> you bet! <laughs> I, yeah, I transform and I just roll out. <laughs> Where would you guys like to head? There's the city that's currently under attack by the other ships and then I believe the pod was on the opposite end of where this beast landed which is now distracted by the wreckage. I'm going to take my chances on the city. Okay, let's go to the city then. You want to go to the city? Yep, I made sure to open my, my trunk so Zephyr can get in. Okay, all right, so Zephyr climbs on board and you start heading towards the city, which is currently being bombarded by these five cruise ships. And you see the same cosmic rust eating away at the city and the ground around you. Um, we need to contact uh, Tremor. Yeah, we're in a we're in a we're in a tight spot. Yeah, we need we need some. Do we have a signal here, or? So you attempt to try to dial in tremor, and it's all static. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Uh, we might have to uh, try to take an outer route away from what what that creature can see. Try to get to the pod without the creature noticing. Go ahead and roll me a D one hundred, both of you. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> 17. Uh, 70. <laughs> oh god, what's the average of that? Oh, the average is 43 and a half. So you make it to the pod perfectly fine. You cram back in, but with the exception of less space due to the baby turbo fox that you now carry with you guys, who's trying to be comfortable and trying to stretch at the same time in the pod with you guys. Oh, uh, j j just lay, lay here. Just lay down. Let's get out of here. Hey, Wheeler, if you want to keep that thing on the ship, you're going to have to hide it. Uh, I'm going to have to go get an upgrade then. So you press the activation sequence for the escape pod to relaunch, and it shakes as it climbs in altitude. And as it does, you can see more and more of the city, the planet below you. You can just see clouds of cosmic rust just spread around everywhere, turning what used to be like the concrete jungle of the cities into gray deserts, almost in a blink of an eye as it passes through. Your pod reaches space, heading towards the moon, 
as that is the last known location that Tremor gave you guys. Can I look down and see the destruction? Yes. So you see the destruction of the planet. Smoke everywhere. Fire. Abyss. Cosmic rust, smoke, fire. Not not a happy place right now. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> so much for neutral. So in a good way, you guys saved her, but Fox. We did, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> So as you're making your approach towards the moon, you do not see the Hydra assault carrier anywhere. But getting closer and closer and almost going around the moon, you see a massive D-class world sweeper, which if you don't know what a D-class world sweeper is, it's a massive, massive Decepticon ship that can, it's almost the size of like a small moon. It's slightly smaller than the moon that you're going around, which kind of hid it from view. And it can hold an entire armada on it. It literally sweeps. Yeah, it li- <laughs> literally sweeps worlds. <laughs> and you guys know it's like a prototype. It's one of the first of its kind. Although, there's something different about this one. The Decepticon insignia shape of the ship is not purple like most of them are. Instead, it's like a, a gray color and the divots between the, the solid bits of the insignia are like glowing with what appears to be like lava substance. Hmm. Okay. Your pod is kind of drifting in that direction. And before you can do anything, it shakes. And you can automatically already tell that you're being dragged into the ship with a red tractor beam that shot down and engulfed you. This wasn't the extraction that I was thinking. I thought we were going back. Me neither, but it's it's uh, the only thing we have right now. So you get slowly pulled in into a massive hull bay where looking around from the inside of your pod still, you can see the hydro assault carrier in here. And it looks like it's gone through hell. There's blaster fires all over it, scars, burnt marks, the works. And as your escape pod smoothly sets down, you're surrounded with what looks like at least 10 other bots around you. You do not recognize anyone. They look like a typical grunt Decepticon, except with the initial CD underneath each of their badge. Mm-hmm. One of the bigger generic bots steps forward and says, Step out of the pod and follow me. As they're slowly, forcibly opening the escape pod doors. Uh, before I step out, I want to try to see if I can hide the Turbo Fox in like a, like a vent or something. Oh, okay, then like a distraction. It's the least I can do. Step out of the pod. That's how you welcome the man who just completed the most successful mission among us. Or bot. I don't know what you're talking about, but you're going to prison. What? Prison? For what? Ransom. Ransom? For what? Your high valuable targets. Who's a high valuable target? Me? You're working for Wait, Costner? ransom for what? Ransom for what here? I'm con- now I'm confused. What's my charges? Need to know basis. Come on. No! Does the name Crossboom mean anything to you? The name what? Of course it does. It does. Now, move along. And as the as he says that, a couple of them appear behind you, so now that there's more than ten that you can see, and kind of shove you forward to follow. So as you're being escorted away from the escape pod that you came in on, you see another ship coming in fast into the hull bay and kind of make a rough landing and kind of skits across the ground. And another crew come out of this ship and they have a bot on a medical slab racing them past you guys. Go ahead and roll me a perception check. Uh, that's a three. Okay. <laughs> I'm preoccupied to see oh what happens God. to my turbo force. <laughs> That's an eight. <laughs> <laughs> so they race past you uh, with this medical slab, and they're so quick, you don't see who exactly is on there. All you see is Energon leaking off the medical pad as they rush into this through the pair of doors on the wall with a giant cross, and they disappear. The guards, however, continue to lead you to a different pair of doors entirely and walk you down a hall passing several other bots in the area and guards and you quickly find yourselves thrown into a prison cell and they've taken all of your weapons and belongings including the mission item objective and it looks like they didn't even notice that you had a turbo fox 
and they throw you into this prison cell. Now, in this prison cell, you, you're looking around and you see Tremor, who looks really roughly beat up. He's missing his right arm, his left leg, his right leg, and half of his lower jaw. And this energon puddle underneath him, he looks like he's barely holding on. Also in the prison cell, you see another bot. And at this point, uh, Spitfire, if you want to describe yourself, let me just get this uploaded so I can look at it while I talk. The bot in the other cell is a prominently blue Autobot, very sleek and slender, probably timid seeming, like not looking at probably anyone staring at the floor, pacing in her cell. What you can tell from looking at her is that her alt vehicle mode is some kind of car. She's very fit, kind of like sporty. Awesome. All right. And what do you do? Um, I'll try to see if I can do anything for Tremor. Can I? see if I can at least stable him if not uh, trying to get any information I can and if not uh, probably put him to rest okay and uh, if I'm just trying to reiterate you said Spitfire's in the cage yes us. yes you're all in the same cell how did you end up here what's it to you well you're sitting with a Decepticon general and they just throw him in with an Autobot it looks like why would you even care aren't you just like them something an Autobot would say what was that couldn't tell if that was like an actual mumble or <laughs> if I just like could not hear. No, that was the mumble. Okay. That was the mumble. I'm gonna look at, I'm sorry, I was thinking like what my next thing I wanted to do. <laughs> um, I'm gonna look at um, Tremor, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, my boss. What happened? Yeah, so it becomes immediately apparent that Tremor can no longer communicate verbally. It's just wires going zit and that more energon leaks from the hole of where their mouth used to be but they realize how important it is to try to communicate with you in some way. So they take one of their remaining hand, I think I said it was their left, and dips it into the pool of energon and begins to slowly draw on the wall. Go ahead and roll me some perceptions while you wait. Everybody? Sure, everybody can do that. Uh, I'm blind, uh, that's a three again. 19. It, well, you're too distracted with the writing that's being performed on the wall. But Zephyr, you're able to look around and you see a power box outside of the cell that looks like it's powering the gates shut. And if only you had some sort of ranged weapon, you could shoot it. Oh, if only I had <laughs> a ranged weapon <laughs> to hit that power box right there outside of our cell. Um, hey, hey Wheeler. Yeah. I'm gonna need to borrow that Turbo Fox. Careful. D does it do commands? I haven't trained it yet. Try. The Turbo Fox just turns its head. <laughs> How heavy is this Turbo Fox? Don't, don't you dare throw it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me eat this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me eat this to victory. <laughs> so as you guys are doing this, the guards are still in this room and they're going through your things. One of them takes all of your weapons and pretty much everything else you had and leaves accordingly to the bigger guard who told him to go to the storage. The bigger guard takes the mission objective, the giant silver cylinder thing that you guys worked so hard to get and also leaves but does not tell you where or say out loud that you guys can hear. The only other person in the room is one guard who looks like he's half paying attention sitting in a chair. There's two things we could do. Zephyr. We can either call in that guard and distract him, and uh, eventually we could bash him into the gate and hopefully knock him out and try to get a key if he has one. Or uh, once Tremor finishes writing, and I know this is going to sound bad, but I can put him out of his misery and we can use his arm to throw it to the box. Oh my god, you guys are monsters. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, if you <laughs> have you seen us last episode, this is a piece of cake. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm putting him out of his misery. He's he's literally dying here. I can't, you know, I'm giving him a swift death. And then what I do with his body is, you know. As you guys are talking to each other, and as Tremor is still riding on the wall, the baby Turbo Fox, unaware to you two, goes up to Spitfire and kind of like hangs out by their feet and looks up. She, like for a split second, probably ignores it, but this little creature kind of catches her curiosity and she like bends down to it and holds out her hand to it in a very calm gesture. Uh, Turbo Fox leans into the hand. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> 
She like gives it just gentle little pets, a little maybe a little scratch under the chin. The baby gives a little yip. Oh my god. Um, she continues to just casually, gently pet it, and she turns to both Eight Whaler and Zephyr and says, "So, what is this thing?" Um, um, uh, that's a Turbo Fox. Yes, definitely uh, an orphan that we've 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 found. We rescued. Yes, rescued. Uh huh. Um. <laughs> anyway, changes. Sure. Yes. Uh, well, you, you you don't know where we came from. You know that planet is gone. Uh, we needed to to rescue it. You know. Yeah, we we saved it. We saved it from that 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 destruction down there for sure. Absolutely. She gives him a look of like that's that's total bullshit. I'll let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> As you guys finish that, Tremor conveniently has finished writing on the wall, and what you can make out of it, it says "Take my ship," and he's even went to the mile to put a comma. <laughs> and find and then just an s and it just gets smeared as his hand drops to the floor fine okay and you can kind of see his optics begin to flicker at a faster rate as they were before it's as if his spark is about to give out i have an idea hey wheeler i'm choosing the first option here we gotta bring that guard in here okay you do your job you're the distraction i'll try to see no 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 no. i i i specifically need you to be the distraction this time oh you need me to be the distraction what do you want me to do i need you to bring him in here just call him in yeah, I'm gonna hide in the corner because I'm pinning a little block, and I'm gonna see if I can stay hidden when he comes in, and then we can play the uh, "Where'd my buddy go?" game. Okay, I was gonna tell them that Tremor was dying, but that could work too. Oh, like they're gonna care? That is true. They are Decepticon. I'm a Decepticon, and I'm telling you, I don't even care. <laughs> Ooh. Well, I thought you were. Doing that. <laughs> Ooh. Shot being fired. We've been, we've been through some missions together, and I thought you were. You've been acting a lot different than most Decepticons. Right. <laughs> Hey, I have a little compassion, okay? Yeah, and that little compassion makes a difference. It's just minuscule. <laughs> it's minuscule. As you both were arguing, Tremor's lights went out. He's completely gray. He's dead. I close his optics, and uh, I just lay him back, leave him there, and I'll I'll get up, and then I'll start making some ruckus and start calling out the, to the guard and saying, Hey, uh, my little buddy disappeared. Have you seen him? Oh, do I have to roll a sneak on this? Absolutely. 13. So the guard gets up and immediately he goes, What's that little guy doing? Excuse me? Yeah, you. You don't see me. Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, is, is he finally dead? The, the, the not so good looking one. No. He looks pretty dead. He's just resting. Well, maybe you should come in here and take a look for yourself, big guy. You know what? Maybe I will. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> uh, so he opens the gate, and as he does, he shuts it behind him. And he walks up, and he says, Back! Back up! All of you! Uh, at this point, can I stun him with my ability? Yes, if that's your ability. It is an ability. How does this ability work? What is your, what is your ability? <laughs> what does it say? <laughs> I'm, I'm pressing control F to find it and I can't. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, roll a d20 plus strength. If you roll higher than the target's cons, uh, cons saving throw, the target opponent skips their combat phase. You tell me, does that benefit you? This moment, we're not in combat. Can I, can I decapitate him when he is stunned? <laughs> if you do enough damage to kill him, I, su I guess. Bunch of murderers. Wait, does that put us in combat after he's stunned? <laughs> <laughs> you will all be in combat. It will just have their turn skipped when it becomes their turn. Okay, I stun him. Okay, roll. Well, he's doing that since I don't know I'm just back. No, no. Yes. No, what? Uh, no, that does not work. <sighs> you you try to rush him and stun him, but this is a small cell. There's not a lot of places to hide. He can see everything coming. And as he wa witnesses you running at him like a little maniac he just kind of steps over you <laughs> and he's like don't don't try anything uh and if you're eight wheeler are you also doing combat or are you uh as he I'll, i as i see this and i see Sephir like be jumped on I'll, I'll i'm gonna wait for the the guard to kind of bend over and try to get the body of tremor and then i'll try to okay. like bash his head against the wall goodness gracious me <laughs> Habitus. <laughs> We're trying to get just, just damn. Here. Try, try not to damage his collarbone area. That's all I ask, please. Okay. So he, he gets on one knee and he kind of like flips Tremor over. So now he's belly up like a goldfish. And he's like, oh, he is dead. 
Why didn't you guys just tell me? And he looks up. Go ahead, Abuler. Yeah. Uh, see, so he so he's getting up. I want to rush in, do that. So before he right. before he kind of looked at me. Roll strength. What is my strength? I don't think I have all my strength. Five. <laughs> Nice. You're a dis you disappoint me. <laughs> all happening today, bud. I'm, I'm a big bot, but I'm a gentle bot. <laughs> you try to rush him, and you don't understand that he has... He, he's not as big as you are, but he's able to be more agile, in a sense. So when you try to rush him, he just kind of, like, flips you. And so now you land it on your back behind him. Ah. And he's just like, you guys need to stop. And he quickly leaves the room by opening the cell door and shutting it. And he says, All right, don't do anything stupid. I'm going to go tell people Tremor is dead. And he leaves. Okay, question. Answer, 42. <laughs> How massacred is Tremor's body? <laughs> Pretty bad. He's missing two of his legs, one of his arms, and the lower part of his jaw. He's lost a lot of energon, and that's okay. probably what killed him. So they, they at least let him keep his happy hand. Oh my god. Oh my. I'm just kidding. Why? Why do you do this to us? <laughs> Criminals, all of you. <laughs> Heathens. Okay, well, that there goes that plan. How, so, are the bars like I'm trying to think of the like the gate for the gel cell, is it like individual bars or is it like a kind of like a like a beam like force field kind of door? It's beam bars if that helps. Okay. But that you could stick your hand out. It's not like they're Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. How big? How um, big are I, I I suppose we have to go with option two here. Well, how 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 big are the bars? Can the Turbo Fox fit through them, or uh, even Sephir? Because we haven't even tried. So the Turbo Fox is near Stabit Fire still, and kind of looks up to them. I lost my child already. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Fire. She looks at Turbo Fox. She looks at the bars. She looks back at Turbo Fox. Baby Turbo Fox nods and begins walking between the bars. She goes, Atta boy. <laughs> and the little baby hops up and like kind of gnaws at the power cables until you hear like a, a powering down sound and the bars disappear. How did you do that? You're welcome. Wait, 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 wait. That was an option? Seems so. So now you guys are free bots. <laughs> okay. Oh, we're gonna get out of here. So, um... I need to get something back, too, so... Yeah, what should I call you? You can call me Spitfire. She, like, begrudgingly holds out her hand for a handshake. <laughs> I pull out mine, and I handshake them. My name is Aide Wheeler. Uh, this partner of mine is Sephir. And that one out there that you just sent out is uh, Turbo Fox. I despise Autobot so much, I'm just gonna call you Autobot. She just slowly gives him just the stink eye. <laughs> 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 All right. I guess you're with us. All right. Well, welcome to the group. Guess I've got no choice. All right, let's get out of here. You guys kind of slowly open the door that led you into the prison room, and you see the hallway, and you can see the direction where you guys came from, where you know is the Bay Hall, which should be on your right, but there's a couple doors on the left. There's one at the far end of the hall, and then there's another sub-hallway that connects that looks like it goes across the way. You do not know any location of anything anywhere else. We can split up if you want. <laughs> the best thing to do on any... <laughs> you, you sure you want to do that, bud? This is a Scooby-Doo show, okay? <laughs> Let's split up, gang. <laughs> <laughs> Shaggy and Scoob, you guys go over there. <laughs> I guess I'm Shaggy and Scoob because I have a Turbo Fox. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my god, yes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, as you guys are, like, peeking through the door... I want to also say that uh, the baby Turbo Fox is also peeking its head through the door. They're like, what are we doing this for? That's so cute. In this hall, you see no guards. Is this a, uh, a fancy prison where they have signs letting everybody know where the direction of the hangar is? Or is this... No, actually. <laughs> so no signs at all. It just says... No. Is there a map on no. the wall? No. There is no map that you know of. <laughs> all right, game. Time to split up. Although, maybe you might know someone or find someone that might know where things are. <laughs> Spitfire walks straight out. Yeah. Wait, you know where this place is? Wait, you know this place? Well, yeah, I snuck onto the ship. Huh. We thought they captured you. Huh. I honestly thought you were just captured. No. I, uh, 
I snuck on because they took something from me. So uh, I tried to get it back, but uh, obviously I got caught. Well, here's to not getting caught again. <laughs> well, maybe just you. So I'm assuming you're going to head towards the next hallway, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you guys follow? Yeah. Wasn't, wasn't there a door to the left? There was a door to the left, and then there's a, another hallway on the opposite side of the way that you guys are on. I'll stick with I guess I'll stick with Spitfire. I don't want to open a door into a, a room full of guards. Okay. You follow down this other hallway, and you reach a dead end, which has one door on the right and one door on the left. I guess right is right. I'll go right. a <laughs> um... <Atta> boy. <laughs> okay. The door appears to be locked or that you don't have proper clearance. badge or clearance or whatever to open it. Although, if one is perhaps to roll a strength check, they might be able to persuade the door into opening. Ah, well, we've, we've already tried this. I'm a gentle bot. I don't have a lot of strength. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> All right, roll, roll whoever wants to try. Who has better strength? My strength's minus two. <laughs> I have a plus one Spitfire. Let me assist you, though. <laughs> okay. So Spitfire kind of moves you guys out of the way, like a little little sassily, but enough to get the memo around, like step aside. And with barely an effort, with one hand, rips the door off. What? Dude, I'm so cool. <laughs> okay. I didn't even know my own strength. I just haven't. Uh, like I said, I'm a gentle bot. Of course. You're a bounty hunter. How are you gentle? Um... When the occasion requires to be gentle, I am prepared. When it requires for me to kill somebody, I have my guns, which I don't have right now. So So you make it into what looks like a storage room. There's several boxes around. Go ahead and roll me each a D100. Oh no. 29. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> All right, so you made it into the storage room. You start looking through the boxes and you find your belongings. And as you gather your things, Spitfire, you pull out of the box the item that you're looking for uh, and you can tell the group if you want. And then at the same time you pull it out, you see Eight-Wheeler pull out a rusty old Autobot insignia. Okay, yeah, because she's also pulling out uh, a pretty dingy kind of beat up Autobot insignia too. She looks at hers. I mean, she looks at the one that Eight Wheeler has, and she's a little hesitant because it's not great <laughs> in her eyes. Look at you both. You both have just completely fit my expectations for both of you. What's that supposed to mean? Autobots. Okay. So, Zephyr, you also pull out all your belongings. That D100 I had you roll, this is on top of the things that you find, like, of your belongings. You find, Zephyr, a mini laser crossbow. No. Which has no ammo. No. And I will. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and has no ammo at the moment. And another health pack. Sweet. Eight wheeler. You find 50 Shanix. Always worth the money. Always worth the money. And a great sword. You also find what looks like Turbo Fox bait. Oh, perfect. I needed that. And that's pretty much all that you find in the storage room. Everything else is kind of just junk. Do you want to roll to see if you saw Spitfire also pick up what they were after? Uh, yes, uh, I was okay. I was about to say something about it, but that works. Yes, go ahead and roll perception for me. 12. Okay, yeah, you'll see. Okay, so I'll, I'll wait until we're walking out the room uh, and I'll let Zephyr go first. And then I'll walk up to Spitfire uh, and I'll, I'll ask her, does this mean anything to you? I saw that you carry one as well and I show her. Uh, the rusted Autobot symbol. She glances at it and looks down at her, the one that she has, and she was kind of sad looking at it. She says, yeah, this, um, this group of mercenaries, they, um, they took him and they killed him and took his insignia. The only thing basically left of him as a sort of memento to prove that, to prove that he was killed. And, uh, I just, I really needed to have something back of his, so. Oh, I'm sorry. She gives a little shrug. Sorry for your loss. Do you know the the bot responsible? I don't I don't know his name, but trust me, if I saw him, I'll know. So we're certainly we're searching for the same thing in a way. My team was also killed by a mysterious bot. All I have is his voice. I I finally got a name today, Crossboom, and hoping I can meet up with him and avenge my team. I can tell you that this insignia was uh, I found it with my team at a rendezvous. I did not take it from any bot's body, so 
put you at ease if that does anything. She listens and she kind of slowly nods. I can tell you're not lying, but that name, Crossboom, it, it sounds familiar. Can't tell from where, but I hope that we both can find him and take him down. It's like we're in it for the long journey. She chuckles softly. We'll see. Well, I know we're a rough pair, but we can we can get the job done. And I'm talking about Sephir and, and myself. Awesome. All right. So what's the plan from here? There's a door across from the storage room. You can go back down the hallway. And then when you reach the end of it, there's that one door that will be now on your right side. Or you can start heading towards the left, towards the bay hall, where you saw all the ships. I want to shut the door across the hall. Okay. It is locked, but something with maybe strength could open it. <laughs> if only there was something strong enough to break this door. Could we ask you to help us, Spitfire? <laughs> for that split second i just imagine her looking around like huh huh what you talking about <laughs> i want i want to know the position of where the door handle is to me is it like a, a good jump up or is it so yeah it's gonna be a door with a handle but because you're so small you can't quite reach the the handle itself Okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Do you want me to pick you up so you can reach the door handle? <laughs> I'll give you. I'll give you an advice. Uh, he bites, so be careful when you pick him up. Oh Lord! Don't you dare! Do you want to open the door? Look at me. When you say that to my face. He kneels down. Oh, no. <laughs> Gotta be on our level. <laughs> There's something important on the other side of the door. I have a feeling. Mm-hmm. Open it. She squints. She stares. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I hate these people. <laughs> How would you like to uh, open this door? Huh. Probably in a manner that isn't super loud and obvious. Okay. Like slowly sort of pry it, I guess. Okay. So you want like a rip piece off as you're trying to pry it? Or just like squeak it open a little bit. <laughs> like when you okay. open a door and you like only open it a little bit so you can get like a little peek inside. Yeah. Oh, okay. You attempt to open the door just a little bit to peek inside. And this is no amount of effort from you. Like this is so easy. It slowly opens, but as it's slowly opening, it's making a loud creaking noise. But you manage to open it just wide enough to see what's inside. I'll take a peek. Four guards are sitting there at a wreck table looking like they're uh, munching on some energon goodies ah she like looks back she looks back at the two of you ah there's four bots in there are you sure you want to go in there no well, i mean you two can go take a peek um no i'm gonna, just gonna keep walking probably for the best they're just eating food let them be i can totally overpower them with this empty crossbow i can totally take them on yeah yeah i'm just choosing not to i'm going to go the other <laughs> <laughs> the turbo fox already leaving the hall as well with zephyr like they know what's up as well they grow up so fast <laughs> they're so independent Excuse me? one minute uh i was <laughs> holding it and the next just leaving me behind so you make it to the end of this hallway which is the beginning of the other which way do you want to go at this point the right side is the unknown door the left side is where the hall bay is and still no guards in sight which is you think is odd because you saw a bunch on your way into prison yeah the, the, the one that's reporting on tremor is taking a very long time it's probably break time <laughs> so uh, I, I turn a spitfire and i'm like uh... Did you manage to get everything that you needed? Or is there anything else you need? Just the insignia was all I needed. Okay. Although, I didn't ever quite get a chance to see how to leave when I snuck on. Wait, do I hear this conversation? Yes. Do you snuck on a world sweeper for an insignia? Yeah. Out of box. Now, Sephir, we all have our reasons. She looks like she's trying not to throttle him. <laughs> if you could ask me, I literally just got picked out of space and got brought on here against my will. It was that easy. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, we all ended up in the same place, no matter if we got on board the secret way or we were forced in. So we're all in this together. Now play nice. Yeah, okay. Fine. <laughs> so I guess, do you know the way to the hangar? Um, I don't think I technically do. I'm just trying uh, to think. Yes, you would. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I do, in fact, know how to get out of here. Oh, she, she points down the, the long stretch of hallway. You should be down this way. You point to the left, right? Yeah. Perfect. Is that the way you all wish to go? Well, if we got everything we yes. needed, we gotta yes. we gotta regroup. So my plan was to leave. Okay. I mean, if you consider uh, a crossbow, an empty crossbow, if you will, everything I need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, 
Do you want to go back and get more? <laughs> you found your other belonging too. Oh, oh, okay. I thought that was the only thing I got. <laughs> no, no, no. I said on top of what you found. Sorry, if that wasn't okay. clear. I guess you're sorry. Uh, it was clear. <laughs> it was just for being separate. <laughs> <laughs> so you make it down the hallway and you enter this massive bay hall. And at this point, there are many other ships, all of which you've seen that were on Antilla causing the destruction have landed here. Uh, and then there's also the Hydro Salt, exactly where you last saw it, and the pod. Roll me perceptives. I was getting ready to cringe, getting ready for you to say roll <laughs> initiative. <laughs> just you wait, bud. I got something for you. Mm. Okay. Just separate, right? Anyone who is participating here. Oh, gosh. No, no, I mean the that you have something for us, and then that means suffer only, right? Not not everybody. <laughs> yes, suffer <laughs> is going to single handedly take down the ship. Do this. Okay. Yes. I knew he could. Worse. Oh my God! A natural one till two. Damn. The coast is clear to what you guys think is the case. <laughs> <laughs> so you begin making your way to the hydro salt, only to be surprised by two guards standing watch who immediately spot you and raise their blasters. Roll me initiative. <sighs> <laughs> One of those things where I open my mouth entirely too wide. <laughs> That's my initiative. Hey, it's a two. I think the bot hates me today. Sixteen. That's gonna something that'll happen. All I've been getting are twos and ones. This is rigged. I mean, to be fair, this is literally the entire campaign with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one was going so much better compared to the other one. That is true. That is true. <laughs> I got natural. Zephyr, you're up first. Oh. Oh, well, you have 16. What would you like to do? You're up first. Wait, so what's going on? Like, I, I wasn't, I'm not entirely sure what the situation You're is. You're walking up to the Hydro Assault, and two guards were standing next to it, and they immediately spotted you guys as you were on your way to it. Is it possible for me to, well, have an empty crossbow? Uh, I guess I'm just going to try and take a pop shot at the one on the left, I guess, with my slingshot. Yeah. That's six. So uh, you take a shot with your slingshot and you hit the hydro salt and it makes a ping. Just a dent, just a dent. It's just a dent. It's hardly going to be noticeable with all the other blaster scars already on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's their turn. I'm just going to have them both go at the same time. The one nearest to where you miss is going to raise their blaster and begin firing at their location. Uh, natural 20. It's not your day today, folks. <laughs> Oh, no. Go ahead and take six damage, and when you do, your sling is going to break oh. on impact. My slingshot? Yeah. That's just rough. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Well, I could double the damage. Broken. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're it's supposed broken. to do with nat 20s. <laughs> oh, man. I'm a kind, just god. <laughs> No, oh, yeah, absolutely. I got two, <laughs> two useless weapons on me. And the other guard is going to try to take a shot at you, 8-wheeler, and miss. So it's going to shoot right below your feet, missing you. So what was that about your luck? Well, yeah, well, <laughs> they are, they're always going for my feet. It's not fair. <laughs> and that makes it your turn, 8-wheeler. Okay. How far are they from, from where we're standing? They're maybe like 25 feet. Not too, not very far at all. I'll go, I'll go with the fusion cannon. I'll just shoot them. I'll shoot the one on the right. Okay. Do you want that to be the one that you were almost shot by or the one that shot Zephyr? I'll do the one that shot me. Going for my feet. I'll go for his feet. Try to blow okay. them off. <laughs> go for his feet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, roll. He holds no grudges. <laughs> an eye for an eye. Natural 20. Ooh, yes. That will hit. Beautiful. We'll go ahead and double that damage when you roll it. That's 14. Fabulous. So 28 points of damage. Yes. Yeah. In your not... We're, we're gonna call this not a grudge. <laughs> Firing retaliation back. Instead of just only shooting at their feet, that's all that remains from this bot. <laughs> only their feet. Oh my god. It, it's Whoa. just like smoke coming out from their feet and the rest of them is just gone. Like they burnt up from the blast. <laughs> I, I thought I thought you were going for their feet. I was. But <laughs> at the last second, I changed my mind. I had a good feeling about this one. Zephyr, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, well, the only thing I can do is shoot, shoot at the next one with my uh, pistols. Okay. Okay. Let me... 11? Uh, yes, that'll hit. Sweet. Doom, doom, doom. Seven. Okay. So they take a couple shots from your p dual pistols, uh, and they kind of take a step back, but it looks like they're still fine. They're still okay. Okay. Just okay. 
Just okay. Not great, mind you. <laughs> Not in Just their okay. best mood. <laughs> yeah. So they're going to go ahead and try to give returning fire. And miss this time. Yes. It flies right past your head and hits the ground behind you. Good thing you were shorter. Eight wheeler, you go. I'll blast him with my eye. Do my ice pistol. Okay. Changing weapons. Yeah, I don't want to blow him off. It sounded weird, but <laughs> blow him up. Right. Blow him up. <laughs> it's right. just a little. Yeah. That's an eighteen. Oh my god. Oh, now you're a high roller. Okay. Yeah, that, that's gonna hit. But it matters. It's a nine. Wow. Yeah, that's gonna do it. They have to make us. Constant, it doesn't matter, and they're dead. Turn. They drop, and well, because they're dead, they can't make a save and throw. No. They freeze when they die. Perfect. So there's just a little crystal cracking sound as they freeze. I spin my I spin my pistol and I holster it. Perfect. Encounter over. What's the game plan now, boys and lady? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm so used to saying boys. I mean, <laughs> boys and girls. Is only one thing? Boys is gender neutral. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, dude. All right, what's the plan now, are we, dude? Are we talking about B-O-I, boys? The boys. <laughs> Absolutely. Where we drop it. A little robo boys. I guess we'll book it for the ship. The Turbo Fox sprints and kind of does like this little cute bounce as it's like jumping and running into the ship. I smile and I go, ah. Okay, so you all make it into the ship. Since you guys are so used to tremor driving, you all start heading towards the pilot seat. And you each think that you are going to pilot the ship. And you all awkwardly try to sit in the main driver's seat only to bounce each other off. And then you guys each stand up and stare at each other down to see who will pilot the ship. What do you do? I just step out and I'm like, you guys deal with it. I'll make sure nobody's coming into the ship. I'll head to the where we came in, make sure nobody's just trying to get in. So like the the lobby area of the ship? Yeah. Are you a pilot, Autobot? He stares at him and then just turns away. I'll let you deal with it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's your trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I go to start the uh, ship. As you're in the seat, which was not built for a small bot like you, you have to, you stand, have to stand. You have to stand <laughs> on the seat and press all the buttons. Do you want a booster seat, man? <laughs> <laughs> no, but can you can, can you hand me a seatbelt, please? Do you want to sit on my lap? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> can, I'm dying. <laughs> can, can you can you please hand me the seat <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. One second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crying. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hold on a second. <laughs> I just have this image of like a tiny little sh standing in his seat, like desperately trying to reach the wheel. An angry little find you. <laughs> yes, just for the love of God, stop staring. <laughs> Uh, here's the uh, epitome of little man syndrome. That is. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to be tall. <laughs> she uh, she looks she, like looks away as if she's not doing it, and like hands him the seatbelt. And she also like scoots over just like a little box, a little crate to him, <laughs> just in case maybe he'd be more comfortable if he could sit. Thank you. Did you want? To, did you say something? Thank you. A little louder. She like leans down. <laughs> Can you please put it on the seat? <laughs> uh-huh. And she, like, puts it on the seat. <laughs> do you need me to do anything else? Can you hand me the seatbelt now, please? One more time? I have the seatbelt. She's, at this point, she's trying not to laugh, but, you know, she's trying to be polite and courteous, as a lady would. Absolutely. She hands him the seatbelt. <laughs> okay, stop in. All right, guys, stop in. We're going to ready to blast off out of here. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. <laughs> You finally get your box to sit on, you get your belt, and so you're looking around and you see a big red button. Now this amuses you, because you like big red buttons. You press it, and that starts the engine. And immediately as the engine starts, eight-wheeler, you see several guards coming out of the doors that you came out of from the hall into the bay hall. At least a half a dozen or more. I start screaming to the ship, and I'm like, let's get out of here. We have a lot of butts incoming. Okay. Um. I. I. I'm. I make the ship go. 
Jesus. We've gone now. <laughs> Make the ship go room room. <laughs> uh, for a split second, I'm just like sitting there going with my mouth. <laughs> and you like the airplane noises. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you start pressing buttons, you're not sure which does what, you just start pressing buttons and the ship starts shaking and it slowly starts like scraping against the floor as it's moving towards the exit. Um, do, do I get a luck roll on what buttons I press here? <laughs> yeah, you get to roll a d100, my dude. Oh, no. Go ahead and roll it now, I was literally gonna ask you. Can I help him just press buttons? 94. Nice. You magically click the right buttons even as Spitfire is also pressing buttons next to you. <laughs> the ship begins to take off. You reach into space. At this point, you created enough distance between you and the, the D-Class World Sweeper that you can see the, sh the ship that you just took off from begin to turn in your direction. Oh no. Crap. Blaster fire rains down on your ship. And you can feel it like rocking and shaking violently. It's at this point, Zephyr, you notice a big blue button that says warp drive <laughs> i press it can you reach it <laughs> you can't reach it <laughs> no you reach it it's fine <laughs> oh. <laughs> you reach it but spitfire you're also able to like see all this happen so you're you're preparing yourself here i'm like standing on the crate on the seat just trying to reach the button up top <laughs> desperately exactly you're like, I need to press this button. I feel like Rocket Raccoon right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more of Baby Groot, but... <laughs> the moment you press the button, you feel the very fabric of space around you begin to stretch and pull, and all of a sudden you're launched through it like a slingshot. I uh, trip and I try to grab onto something, and I'm like, what is going on up there? I'm like hanging on the seat because I didn't put the seat belt back on. <laughs> You're like glued to it from the speed. <laughs> the suddenly the box is like underneath me rattle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like gripping the the armrests, like digging like my nails into it. <laughs> Uh, the Turbo Fox is in the same room with you, Eight Wheeler, and you see it kind of get jolted back and forth <laughs> oh, no. as the ship Maybe. is pulled and launched. This goes for about a full minute until you hear an explosion from the back. A large boom, followed by alarms and alerts that go off for like one second and you hear like some wiring fizz and they stop. At the same time they stop, you immediately come out of this warp jump that you just did. And this causes all you guys to jolt forward. It's not an immediate like from 60 to zero stop. It's like, it's like that inertia that you feel when you're going like 500 miles an hour and then you drop to 20. <laughs> If that makes sense. I know you've mm -hmm. all gone 500 miles now. But I'm trying, like, Relatable experience. I'm just trying to like, I guess, portray that you're not completely stopped, but it's enough to like still fling you forward, if that makes sense. We get it. Have I lost you guys? No. No, we, we get it. Okay, perfect. Zephyr, you're trying to like take back controls of the ship, but whichever way you move the steering wheel, nothing's working. Uh, on top of that, the last time you move it, it pops off. <laughs> what did you do? Um, hello, this is your uh, captain speaking. I seem to have suffered just minor uh, malfunctions of the yoke of the craft. Um, please do not panic. Um, we may die. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you guys see a planet below you. You do not recognize it. You drop down warp speed over orbit of an unknown planet. Nothing seems to be working. There is, however, one escape pod left on this ship. Because if you do recall, there were two, and you took one to go to Antilla, which was left on the D-Class warship now. So there is one left as a possibility. Or you can choose death. Up to you. Well, how many how many bots? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how many bots can go into the pod? Because we were already cramped with the turbo. Two cramply. Three very cramply. About two and a half. Super cramply. <laughs> and what I'm saying it is possible, <laughs> but no one's gonna have fun. <laughs> if it means living, I don't care. <laughs> I suppose. So the ship begins to catch fire as it's 
hitting the atmosphere. You all crawl into this escape pod, very cramped. Like no one can see any buttons. You can only go off based on feel of the button. Mm, that's right. Good. Yeah, it's fantastic, right? But you are able to hit the right button, eight wheeler, because you're used to these, and it launches at the last minute. Not enough to completely slow your ascent, but enough to make the landing less deadly. Perfect. Just like I planned. Just like you planned. Both of you take two damage. <laughs> That I did not plan. Yeah, okay. The escape pod crashes. And you guys are alive. <laughs> still, still took some damage. The Turbo Fox is obviously not having a good time. It did not like the crash. You can see a puff of smoke of where the Hydra assault crashed and small explosions here and there as you can assume is no longer operational. And that's to the left of you. To the right of you looks like a giant marketplace. But to describe the planet that you have landed on, it's mostly desert with the occasional of a few dunes and partial condensed sediments that look like giant rocks and whatnot, if that helps. Yes. Florida. Florida. <laughs> <laughs> this marketplace looks to be about less than a mile out. What would you like to do? Well, we gotta ditch this pod. Uh, I don't know if the, the, the big world, was it the, the world sweeper? Is still after us, but we better find a place where we can lay low. I agree. Let's start moving. Okay. It'll be faster if we use our vehicle modes. So I'll transform and I'll open the back for the Turbo Fox and Zephyr. So when you open the back, only the Turbo Fox can fit or Zephyr. Hmm. I'll let it choose. <laughs> Go, my child. <laughs> the Turbo Fox has already taken off. Oh, no. Towards the city. Okay, bye. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. This team, uh, this child just grows up so fast. It's like it's learning from you guys when you guys split the party. <laughs> <laughs> so ready up. Yeah, how's it feel? Um, <clears throat> hey, Willie. Yes? I could use your alternative ability to travel the terrain rather fast. Yes, I'm already on it. Thank you. Get on. <laughs> Fire, would you like to also transform and turn into your alt mode? Or... Yes. <laughs> okay. Would you like to describe it for us? I guess the best way to describe it is uh, like an Earth sport car. Very like, very sleek, very nice. Nothing super, super fancy, but something fast. So you begin heading towards the marketplace, and Bitfire is going much faster, you guys. Like she's pulling ahead. She's catching up to the Turbo Fox. Eight wheeler, you're. You're not as fast. You don't have as much uh, horsepower or torque or what we, what we call this, cyber horsepower? <laughs> cyber <know>. horse. <laughs> turbo horse. As, really. I just, as I see this happen. How much turbo horsepower is that? I want to tell <laughs> Sefer and I'm like, no comment. I know it's coming. <laughs> I'm like, no comment. <laughs> just don't. <Yeah. laughs> just keep it to yourself. So you make it to this marketplace. And I'm assuming you guys transform back into your alt modes at the entrance. I'll let the first step out and then I'll try to... Oh, I just figured you flung him out. <laughs> Take him. Like, rides over. <laughs> this marketplace appears to be mostly made up of other Cybertronians or mechanical life forms such as Camions, Dentarians, and the works. Other branching mechanical life form colonies. It also looks like there's a wide variety of shops ranging from medical supplies, weapons, ammo, trophies, painting, vehicle washing, a spaceport where they are likely selling tickets for rides off-world, and a shipyard next to it that looks like on the expendy side, like luxury high-class spaceships, privately owned spaceships. The only other reason you can come to the conclusion that they might be pricey is they have two massive bouncers in front of it. Roll me perceptions. Oh boy. Uh, six. Eight. I dodged in that one there. <laughs> Not me. As you're taking in the scenery, both Zephyr and Eight Wheeler, you notice Spitfire is no longer with you. She's already disappeared into the crowd. You don't know what direction she went. There's so many bots around, you're not sure. But the Turbo Fox is still with you guys. And it looks like it's like Waggling's tail happily that you guys caught up. Glad, glad to see you here, buddy. Little monster. You know where our friend went? Turbo Fox just turns its head at an angle confusingly. <laughs> oh, you mean like pivots it, Ted? Like, yeah, um, yeah, no, like man. the adorable look. 
Yeah. <laughs> no. Guess we're on our own now. How do we lose it? Well, she was way faster. <laughs> <laughs> That's a way we can lose her. Well, it's <laughs> um, clearly not uh, as fast as the Decepticon speeders, but oh yeah, I give her that. She's, she's fast. Ah, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I would like to go get some ammo, but I don't... Do I still have the Shannix? They didn't rob me of that on the ship, did they? No, you got all your stuff back. And we didn't we didn't get to pay it out from the last mission, right? No, because he died. Right, okay. I would like to go buy some ammo. Or my crossbow. I'll follow him. Okay. I'll just keep a lookout for anything suspicious. So you walk up to the ammo shop, and it looks like it just has a bunch of cases around you're not sure what they have in stock unless you ask and it looks like one of those typical drone bots if that makes sense at all they, they kind of speak very robotically greetings hello greetings ammo ammo yes give me crossbow ammo crossbow ammo yes eight eight crossbow ammo would you like one box sure Processing. Processing. One box of crossbow ammo will be ten Shanix. Okay, fine. Hello. Greetings. Who? What does this sh- slingshot use? Rocks? I can, yeah. I, can I just go grab rocks? <laughs> yes, you can actually. <laughs> okay, well, uh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Some I mean, on the sheet it says 18, but uh, really it's anything. I can get my <laughs> hand on find rocks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, hello. Greetings. Repair. Error. No repair services yeah. at this vendor location. Hello. Greetings. Bye. Farewell. No. <laughs> <laughs> what a little <laughs> shit. <laughs> he met his match. Hey, Willard, is there anything you want from them? I think I'm pretty good for ammo right now. Okay. Uh, Any other shops you want to go to? I'd like to repair my slingshot, I guess. Um, the weapons place might be able to do that. Okay, let's do that. Is there that. an upgrade place? Oh, like physical form upgrade. Oh, no, yeah, not, not changing my like vehicle mode or anything. Kind of like uh, alter. You might be able to check a black market shop. Okay, so you will go ahead and go with eight wheeler next since we just did an interaction with Zephyr. So eight wheeler, are you going to the black market? Yeah, I'll try to see if my contacts have any use here. Okay, you make it to the black market, and again, there's the same type of drone robot. Greetings. Uh, greetings. Looking for an upgrade. Can I see your list? No list available. <laughs> Only ask. Okay, uh, I'm looking to. Uh, be able to open my chest to store a turbo fire. Processing. 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 Yes. How much would that be? 100 Shanix. 100 Shanix. Uh, how long would it, will it take you to upgrade me? Procedure would take 15 minutes. Okay. How funny would it be if like, you're in the middle of a conversation and you hear a dun 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> the window sound turning off. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I'll do I'll do the upgrade. Um how do I pay? Do I scan my insignia or something? Uh sure, yeah, you can scan your insignia. When you do, uh they kinda gesture you to a behind a tent to a metal slab, which mm-hmm. is they're kinda trying to get you to lay on your back. Bad. Okay. <laughs> Not sketchy. Not at sketchy all. at all. As you're sitting on your back, you're looking around and you see so you see a pentagon shape which has a minicon like symbol in the middle and it's not as brightly Hmm. green as they normally come by it's very rustic very old if that makes sense uh you see that on one of the shelves along with other medical supplies and parts all right so while you're going under procedure we're gonna flip back to zephyr zephyr you're heading to the weapons location yeah yes okay greetings Hello. Greetings. Hi. Greetings. Repair. Yes. Sling, slingshot. How much? 15 Shanix. Repair. 15 Shanix. I'm paying it to you, you stupid butt. 15 Shanix. I'm getting ready to take out a pistol. <laughs> it's, it scans whatever it needs to to make the transaction happen. 
And instead of repairing yours, it just gives you a brand new one. Mm. <laughs> Damn. Whatever. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Is there anywhere else you would like to go, Zephyr? I'm going to let you, if you want to, go to another shop before they're done with 8 -wheeler. Um, let's see. No. No? Okay. You want to wait around for 8-wheeler? I guess, because um, the only th other thing I would think we would need to go to would be like, well, we need to go find Spitfire, but we also would like to go to the spaceport and get out of here. Okay. Uh, we'll fast forward through time. 8-wheeler, you're done with your procedure. Your chest can now open to fit a baby Turbo Fox if you wish. If they wish as well. This is going to be like a Pikachu scenario. <laughs> I was thinking Misty. I was thinking Misty with uh, Togepi. Psyduck? All good Pokemans. Hi, I, I inquire the bot. Greetings. Greetings. Are you selling or are you... How do I, how do I phrase this? I'm interested in the little Minicon uh, stasis pod that you have there. Processing. Processing. 50 Shanix. 50 Shanix. What was the conversion rate again? One Energon cube equals 100 Shanix. One Shanix equals 100 gold. Okay, sure. I'll give him... I have my Energon cube, so I'll give it to him, and then I'll get 50 Shanix back. Okay. Transaction complete. And they kind of reach up on the shelf, grab it, and then hand it to you. I'll just store it for now. Your Turbo Fox is waiting for you patiently outside. <gasps> Who's a good boy? Shakes their tail wildly. I open my chest. You want to get in? You want to go for a ride? Darts off. I close it. <laughs> Damn. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> the Turbo Fox is trying to act like it's playing a game with you, like darts off, stops, turns around to make sure if you're still coming and can see you like kind of making their way and then starts darting off again until they're finally at the spaceport where many bots are buying tickets to go off world. Well, it's a good thing I have to effort because I'm out of a lot of money. So I'm going to say you guys make it to the space part. Is there anything you want to ask them or interact with? Uh, is it is it like another one of those little station bots? Is it Absolutely. Like... <sighs> I'm tired of them. Uh, Greetings. I want to talk with, uh, give us a minute <laughs> and I'll just... I would like to speak to the manager. <laughs> oh my god, no. <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> <laughs> It just does a full 360 and just says greetings. <laughs> uh, Sefer, do we want to get what? a ticket or do we want to see if we can some way find a ship that we can call our own? Mm. Oh, are you saying we hijack a ship? <laughs> Not hijack. I was thinking more we could buy one. We're already running from... How much money do you have? I have 60 chatting. Okay, I have 65. <laughs> you really think we're going to buy a ship? With 125 Shanix. Uh, it could be, depending on the model and size, we could find a good deal. You're gonna find a catapult that's gonna throw us into space. Hey, it could be a fixer upper, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I would rather have the catapult. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, okay, I'll turn to the bot and say, how much for two tickets off world? Location. Mm. Um, I know it starts with an S. An S. Um, yeah, what's what, uh, I forgot his name already. <laughs> Trevor. <laughs> Trevor wrote on the wall. Oh. Well, he did say take the ship. I thought the S was part inquiring, of the ship. Inquiring, inquiring, results. Salata 6, Salata 8, Garvix, Chandra D4, Benefax B, Spindrafts. Continue. Any of these you wish to travel to? Shot in the dark? I mean, why not? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, I'll let you choose. Um, oh, this is easy. This is my favorite part. Um, random. <laughs> 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 Rain drift selected. No. Your total for today's travel is 3,500 Chanix. Uh, I pulled my pistol out. <laughs> Calm down. 3,500 Chanix. Calm down, Zephyr. We're in a public thing. place. Let's not get our attention. Yeah, when you pull your pistol, like a bunch of the bots around you, like, kind of stop what they're doing, kind of stare. I'm like looking at a five year old trying to do a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> Just come down. <laughs> what is the cheapest flight that you have? Cheapest flight is to the nearest moon, which will be calculating, calculating, 500 Chanix per ticket. I guess we're hijacking a ship. Oh. <laughs> yep, I guess we're hijacking a ship. Just as you guys finish wrapping up this conversation, the Turbo Fox again takes off. <laughs> I'm gonna get a leash. <laughs> this time they start making their way 
towards the shipyard where it looks like they're selling the ship. It runs past the bouncers, like the bouncers don't even see them. <laughs> From a distance, you can see Spitfire talking to the shop drone, and you can also see the Turbo Fox run up and brush it up against Spitfire's legs. And it's at this point, Spitfire, that you notice the Turbo Fox and see Eight Wheeler and Zephyr walking your direction. And you just got to this shop. She bends down kind of excitedly and is like, Hey, little guy! And like, goes to pet him again and looks up and sees Eight Wheeler and Zephyr and kind of stops and like whispers, Are you trying to get away? It has no idea what you're saying and turns its head like confusingly again. It's okay, I know. But its tail is still shaking <laughs> or w- wagging, whichever one is the more appropriate response. <laughs> Vibrating. <laughs> yeah. She stops and she she kind of holds her arms out to like to pick up the triple fox, but she's not sure if it would like that. It jumps into your arms. Yes. She holds them and like uh says like hold on to the the, the shopkeeper and like walks back over to eight wheeler and stuff and is like uh you guys having some trouble or how did you find us oh wait it's the pistol isn't it yeah, my bad um <laughs> we found her yeah you 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 walked to me because <laughs> of the baby yeah oh wait i thought uh, uh. and then i made back away but you know whatever Little sh- sh- uh yeah um do, do you do you i'm not gonna ask do you have a ship that has a big boy seat in it <laughs> I'm in the middle of buying a ship with a big boy C in it. Excellent. We ride at dawn. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We don't know what her plans are. We can't just climb up board. <laughs> Anywhere but here. <laughs> so polite. <laughs> can't just climb aboard. <laughs> just take my ship from under me. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with a big boy ship. <laughs> her seat is the big boy ship with the, the big boy seat. <laughs> She's like, I'm I'm just looking to get off this planet. I don't really have a, a set in stone plan of, of where I'm going. Do you have any idea where you guys wanted to go? Starts with S. Well, here's the thing, guys. There's a lot of things in Transformers that start with S. <laughs> the last thing that started with an S to remind you is Swindle. But that doesn't mean that's what you're after. I am after him because I do have his tracker. I'm trying to get more information this is true. on uh, Mr. Boom. Um, let's just say all my leads are kind of dried out and I literally have no idea where I'm going. Good, good. Okay, solid plan. Uh, you know what? Let me just, let me finish this transaction. We can get on board. Maybe we can plan some stuff out from there. Sounds good. If you, you'll have us. Just don't mess her up. She's brand new. <laughs> I can't promise anything about him. You know, just baby proof it and you'll be <laughs> fine. <laughs> I swear to Primus, if I see one single scratch, you are absolutely paying for it. <laughs> you turn around and you head back to the vendor bot, who has your grand total rung up for you. Eight Wheeler, Zephyr, do you want to roll a perception check to hear on the conversation? Yes. Okay, I knew ahead. he would. I'll just, I'll give her her space. I'll let her do her transactions. A gentleman. <laughs> gentle bot. I'm a gentle bot. I'm a, I may be a mercenary, but... Uh, 16. I have a spark. She's not a bot. Eight wheeler, you're admiring all the ships around, trying to wonder which one she is purchasing. Zephyr, you're trying to be all sneakily around. She knows you're there. She doesn't care as much. But this is what you hear. So, Spitfire, you're talking with the vendor. I have your total ready. Let's hear it. 2,499 Shanix. She nods slowly, processing. Sure, sounds good to me. She has how much? Perfect. Who <laughs> what? She has how much? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> the blue jay is all yours. Thank you kindly. She like rubs her hands together excitedly. <laughs> they hand you a chip, which you can either insert to your like hand or key or whatever you want to call it. And that gives you full access to the vehicle. And do you want to describe it? Yeah. How do I describe a ship? <laughs> well, you can start with the size, like if it's a medium sized ship or a medium sized ship with what looks I'm gonna I'm gonna guess demand some of these terms here. Sure. But, um, medium sized ship with four like turbine engines, two on top, two on bottom. And ironically it is also a nice blue color. It looks it's not like as sleek as maybe some of the other ships. It's a little like rougher in design, but it's definitely something to to get the job done. Right. For those who don't know, this is the most most expensive ship they had on the lot. Hmm. Excuse 
me? <laughs> so she just bought the Lamborghini of <laughs> ships here. Pretty much. Okay. I don't want not that bad. What, what would you like to do now? Spitfire turns to Zephyr, so just kind of leans down a little bit. Do you want to ride in the big boy seat? Yes. <laughs> right this way, gentle bots. She like probably makes her way over to it, inserting the the chip of sorts into her. The entry ramp comes down, and you all enter into the ship. And it's like very fancy on the inside. It's all smooth. It's blue and white. It looks pristine, like it's fresh out of the box. It's got like that nice fresh car smell. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> nice. The Turbo Fox did runs in super excitedly and does like that little. Uh, cute dog thing where like they lay on their back and they kind of wig out a little bit <laughs> I tried to go look at the cockpit <laughs> <laughs> you go in there and it's super fancy super bright lights everywhere there's a lever for speed there's a button for the startup sequence there's blaster controls it looks like there's a warp drive as well it's got shields it's got that's it <laughs> I was trying to think what else it got Bam. Yeah, um, that's it. Uh, it has guns. Um, it's got music. Okay. It, guns. Uh, no, it has okay. guns. There's, yeah. there's something specific I'm looking for here in the cockpit. <laughs> looking for a booster seat? Has the seat rise? <laughs> the seat has a lever that goes up and down. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I try to hop in. <laughs> She's just watching Zephyr the whole time, just <laughs> seeing if he feels struggle his way through it or not. <laughs> like a kid on Christmas. <laughs> wow. You know, like when your parents buy you a bicycle that's just a bit too big for you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll grow into it, sweetie. It's fine. <laughs> Damn it, you're gonna ride it. <laughs> Eight wheeler. Anything you're doing? Uh, I'm checking the kitchen. I want to prepare something for the crew. See, see if they're stocked. It does have a nice kitchen. It is pre-stocked with Energon goodies, the most common ways of galactic welcoming. Nice. Doesn't seem to have anything else other than that because it looks like it's made for Cybertronians. Perfect. I start working on, on a dish. Okay, Bitfire and Zephyr, are you guys taking off? uh launching the ship um yes yes you press the on button it's like a prius you don't even feel it you don't even hear it turn on but the lights turn like the dashboard light turns on to tell you that the engines are on i excuse me oh yeah yes yes um i can't reach the oak um I, I can 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 you help me slide the seat forward, please? You want you want the seat forward? Do you need to 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 come up a little bit, a little higher, maybe? Can you not can you not reach the the little lever on the side, the little adjuster, the little adjuster lever? Please. Okay, fine. <laughs> 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 she again trying to be polite and trying not to laugh. <laughs> she uh she helps like adjust the seat to be a nice proper height for him and scooch oh him forward. <laughs> <laughs> now all the buttons are at your disposal. What do you do? Including the lever. I ram the lever. Yeah, okay. So you ram the lever. The <laughs> ship takes off, but it's so smooth. The only indicator that tells you that you're moving forward or going super fast is the uh, windows to the outside are flashing past you real quick. Like you're no longer on the planet. Like you just went. We gone. We went into yeah, you gone. speed. <laughs> you speed. We outie. I am the speed. <laughs> Stars are flying past you as you're flying through the great universe. Well, when, when we fly off and we're like on our, our way, uh, I'm assuming this has a, like an autopilot. Yes. Kind of like tell Sefer to put it on and then tell them the food is ready. And so I have, I, I've made a chrome alloy pie for everybody. And then I have, they had some Energon wine and then high octane turbo juice for whoever wanted it. I set those on the table. And so as, when everybody sits down, I tell them uh, if we're going to be traveling together, I want us to work together as a team and get to know each other uh, to prove you that you can trust me. I'm going to tell you my story and I let them know all the things that happened, my team, all the missions, all the things we did, and uh, that I'm on our journey to find the killer of my squad, kind of bring him to justice. And then after I kind of tell my story, I tell them when you're ready to open up, uh, I will be here to hear you. Uh, enjoy your dinner. And I kind of get ready to start eating. He's uh, like genuinely taken aback. It's like definitely something she did not expect. So to to see this whole spread and to hear him tell his tale, she she listens very thoughtfully and she says, I thank you. This this means a lot to me. I um I 
did not expect this to to happen truthfully um like you said i'm not i'm not quite ready to tell my tale but uh I'll, i'm sure if i stick around long enough i'll tell eventually but for now let's just relax and dig in dig in <laughs> <laughs> Turbo Fox jumps no. on the table and eats some food. No, 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 get down here, here. Yeah, I'll put a little bowl for the Turbo Fox. This is good pie. Thank you. <laughs> Turbo Fox hops down and eats the food. An old Cybertronia recipe I learned back in the, uh, with the squad. Oh, Soundwave. What news do you bring? Shockwave has begun working on his next test subject. Perfect. I'm assuming our first experiment was a success? It appears the Crucible Dwellers have obtained the element we are after, and we have lost contact with P6-01, although our sensors indicate that they still function. <sighs> we must have that element, Soundwave. Contact the Crucible Dwellers and make a deal with them they cannot refuse. And if they dare, I'll crush them with my bare hands. As you command, Megatron. <laughs>